Any investment analysis starts from project planning, uh, figuring out project details, expressing them in monetary terms. What are the expenses? Uh, what revenues project will generate? Uh, what would be the taxes and uh, all other cash flows? Uh, then, of course, also calculating uh, profitability indicators. The most common one is net present value that practically shows how much payoff investors will get from the project. So now let me uh, illustrate some important points of such calculation on a simplified example. Let's start with the basics of cash flow calculations. Here would be a very, very simplified example. First we need our investment cost. And let's say it would be uh, 1000 euros or some currency. Then uh, we want to have our cash flows. Uh, so it would be uh, everything, all the revenues, all the costs, taxes, etc. Here for simplicity, let me take annual after tax profit. And let's say it would be 300. And then I also need my discount rate. Uh, it's uh, usually defined as weighted average cost of capital. Here, let's assume I borrowed all the capital from bank at 5% lending rate. Uh, now we can already uh, model our cash flows over time. So uh, uh, let's say uh, now we are in year zero, so it's current time, and then the investment is going to survive for um, four years. And let's see. Uh, so in the first year it would be minus our investment cost. And here let's say it's my uh, calculation area, so I want everything to be automated in here. No numbers, just equal signs. Uh, then my profit would be equal to this. And then I can calculate uh, the cash flows. Let me start first with just cash flows, and it would be sum of everything for every year. Then I can discount them. So it would be that every year cash flow divided by a 1 plus interest rate, the discount rate, and in the power of the period. So uh, uh, anything in the power of zero is that anything, so we don't discount the first year. Yes, and then our 300, oh sorry, I need of course to fix the uh, my references, right? No, and this one, no, yes, this. Yes, so uh, what do we get is that uh, first year we do not discount the cash flow and then our 300 becomes less and less and less. Then uh, we can calculate our cumulative discount cash flows. So practically the sum remember the liquidity and here f4 to block the first reference so now when i drag i have the sum at every point and uh, here first uh, i can already see where is my uh, payback period so uh, after year three of that investment operations i get my money actually paid back so they are turning from negative to positive and then also the last year of cumulative discounted cash flows is practically our net present value now uh, net present value can be uh, also uh, calculated with a uh, formula with the existing now net present value can be also calculated with existing function net present value so we need rate and then just cash flows non-discounted cash flows but be careful it wouldn't work that way so if i do this one it would give me different value why because it actually starts discounting from the very beginning so we need to start it from year one and then add to the net present value the investment first year cash flow and then we will have the same value right then what else it could be uh, internal rate of return so uh, here by the way uh, with uh, goals you could say very easy to demonstrate the sense the meaning of the internal rate of return so practically let's open our uh, what if analysis goal seek so uh, when i want to set net present value to zero by changing my discount rate so that discount rate that makes my net present value uh, go to zero is exactly the internal rate of return so here we got uh, eight percent let's get it back 
5 and uh, there is also conveniently a function so we can just select all our cash flows and we get the same 8%. Are we happy with this calculation? We shouldn't be, it's wrong. Our cash flows are in real terms but our discount rate is nominal. So the rule here is simple, either everything excluding or including inflation effect. So without inflation, the cash flows are in constant dollars on real terms, practically the same value over time. But uh, the cash flows could be also uh, including inflation effect in current dollars or nominal terms, otherwise the same product would cost more over time just because of the inflation. And you can convert uh, cash flows from constant to current dollars and back. Then interest rates are usually given in nominal terms, uh, such as uh, risk-free rate or bond yield or bank lending rate. But uh, you can convert a nominal interest rate into a real interest rate by practically deducting the infl inflation. So uh, everything either excluding inflation in real terms or including inflation in nominal terms. Let's fix our model. So we need here an inflation rate. Let's assume uh, the inflation rate would be 2%. And so uh, here our nominal uh, discount rate, our real discount rate, our real discount rate would be uh, nominal practically minus inflation, but with uh, rates it goes like that. And minus one. Okay, and here our real discount rate is 3%, not 5. Now we need to make accordingly changes in here. This is the one. Now uh, our values are discounted less with smaller discount rate. We have a higher net present value. This one is our old one. Again, this one. Okay same value and our IRR that didn't change so practically uh, of course it's uh, numerically the same value we have the same cash flows but it's important to understand whether it's uh, nominal uh, rate or real rate so now our uh, all calculation is in real terms and of course the uh, IRR also shows the uh, real interest rate here Let's see what happens if we perform all exactly the same calculation, but in nominal terms. So I want to use now the nominal discount rate. Let me even write it. real terms and nominal terms. Okay, so uh, what would be the difference here? Uh, our cash flows would be different. Since we are now at year zero, at year one, our cash flows will be inflated. What it means? It practically means here our profit, uh, that we need to uh, add inflation effect in here. One plus inflation rate. Okay. Yes, and now then every new year I want to take previous value and again add the inflation. And every year my cash flows become bigger and bigger. Now I want to change my discount rate back uh, to the nominal one, since we have everything in nominal terms now. And also this one is changing to nominal, so we can compare. I still have some difference in here, let me see. Of course, here it is. Here's the problem. Now we have got uh, similar net present values, okay, and different errors. So uh, the idea is that whether you are calculating everything in real terms or in nominal terms, the net present value is the same. It doesn't matter. The IRR is, of course, different because now it is expressed in uh, uh, nominal terms. It includes inflation. Here it is inflation free. And you see the same difference. 2% that is our inflation rate. So which one to use? 
doesn't matter, whichever is more convenient. Personally, for me, the calculation in real terms feels easier. So if I want to uh, make express evaluation, then I'll go for it. But uh, in case a project planned in more detail, uh, you can get some cash flow evaluations already including inflation effect from experts, for example, or different uh, types of cash flows can be subjected to different inflation rates. Uh, if that is the case, of course, uh, performing the calculation in nominal terms makes more sense. But uh, the takeaway is simple. Everything either in nominal or real terms.